And I also love baseball. I'm a big fan of uh, Major League Baseball. I've been a fan of the New York Yankees for like 35 years. <laughs> I think at a certain point in one's life, one has to start paying back to whatever has benefited that person. In this case, I always wanted to teach because I learned so much from my teachers ever since I was a child. So I thought it's important to give back something that I've learned to the next generation and so on and so forth. So as a result, I've always been very keen about how to teach. It's not about teaching that you just sit down and you just tell someone how to play, but it's how to nurture a talent, how to work with somebody who has a distinct personality and, and a family background and perhaps a unique personality and how to make that work. It's actually difficult. It's not so easy to be a good teacher, but of course, it's something that you learn. You learn from being there, actually on the job. It's not that you can just read a book and suddenly become a good teacher. We all heard, of course, young Beethoven was forced, was severely punished and really roughed up by his very aggressive and often drunk father. But those are exceptions. I mean, Beethoven turned out to be the greatest, but not every child growing up today is going to be the next Beethoven or the next Yasha Heifetz. So the thing is, the idea is to make them love music. So I tend to think that if they react well, then encourage more. If they don't react well, if no matter how, how much you force music upon them, they're not going to react. So my feeling is a little bit more relaxed than maybe some parents would like. But, you know, I figure if the child's really talented, you, you, you can sense that spark. The music level in Asia has become very advanced in recent decades. Talent pool in Asia is enormous. It's incredible what's happening here. More and more graduates from top Western conservatories have gone back to Asia and started teaching. So the students coming up in Asia have learned a great deal about the Western way of interpretation. Taiwan is much better off today than when I was a child. I, I wish I had this kind of uh, environment when I was growing up. Good schools, good teachers, fabulous concert halls, the orchestras are getting better and, and doing wonderful things. And interesting projects, you know, chamber music concerts, dance performances, all sorts of international level events taking place. None of that was happening back in the 1960s. That was not even remotely possible. So it's really, really good. Taiwan is in a good spot right now. So I think Taiwanese talents have gone on to do very good things. If you have incredible curiosity, I think you have to have very good instincts, first of all. Number two, you have to have incredible curiosity, immense curiosity to want to acquire knowledge on how to play, how to interpret, and what it is about the music that you're playing that is unique. Those are very tough things to teach because you have to be born with it. I think innate talent and a humble attitude are very important elements in, in this kind of process. But a really proactive and curious student will take it upon him or herself and learn very quickly. In other words, personal style has to evolve naturally through your personality. It's not something you can acquire artificially. You, ha you have to be born with it. It has, to be, it has to come out of your own conviction on how to interpret this music. So if you're going to play something that is different and strange just for the sake of being different, that's going to pretty much guarantee failure. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in copying something to, to, to sound like you have something to say, but it has to be natural. I don't think I can stay with violin 24-7. That, that's a bit too intense for me. So I enjoy these journeys away from music, like good company, wine, doing a wine tasting together, especially when it's paired with good food. Yeah, so that, that's my, my other thing.